Well, in a previous video, I showed the system layout and how it worked, but I never really gave the specs on the individual pieces of equipment. So since I'm charging here at the airport and the sun is setting, maybe I could give you a quick overview of the specifications of all the equipment I'm using. Start with the Solark all-in-one inverter here. I like to call it the uh, flux capacitor. And here's a spec sheet. So it's the 5K 1P, which means uh, single phase. So you can run it at, um, if you see here, you can run it at 120 or 240 or even voltages in between 230. You can do 50 hertz, 60 hertz, but it's a single phase. It's 5K because typically it's a 5,000 watt. Here they say 4,800 at 120 volt. But if you run it at 240, you can bump it up to 8,000 watts, which is what I'm doing. It'll only work with 48 volt battery, which is good. I mean, you know, if they had to put a 12 volt on there, they have to derate everything. And it can do up to 120 amps charge and uh, discharge, I think, from the battery. And it only weighs 53 pounds, which it looks a lot bigger than 53 pounds, but that's pretty good. And then I've got that connected to an SOK rack mount battery. And I've made a few modifications to it. You see there's a terminal here that I've pulled out. It was a little too close to the case on that. And I didn't need uh, two positive and two negatives. The other modification I did is I'm mounting it kind of on its back vertical instead of horizontal, the way it's supposed to be mounted. And I picked this one because it's got a lot of reinforced structure to hold the individual prismatic cells in place. And in the high vibration environment like a vehicle, I thought that would be a pretty good idea. I loosened all these screws on both sides, pulled this back, loosened them, and then kind of jostled it back and forth, make sure everything settles down to the bottom so that I don't have all the weight supported on those screws. It's all stacked against the bottom. And that should let it uh, sit vertically without any vibration issues as I go east coast to west coast. So that's the only modification I made there. And the Solar converter, no modifications, just uh, plugged everything up and wired it up. And then I've got the Wi-Fi dongle there. And then the panels, these are SunPower 100 watt. They don't actually make these anymore, so they're selling off old stock. I purchased them direct from SunPower. I'll see if I can get a picture here of the, the nameplate. So they're 100 watt. Um, Voltage 17 and a half with 5.8 amps. That's kind of loaded optimally. Open circuit voltage can go as high as 21. So it just depends on how you string them together. I've got, I've got them strung in series to 16, which is well below the voltage limit of the SOK, or the, I'm sorry, with the Solark, which can actually handle up to 500 volts uh, PV input. And there's no ground on the PV system. And in order to really get shocked, you would have to to expose bare wire on the positive and negative wire and touch both of them at the same time. So even though it's a little higher voltage um, than a typical 240 outlet, it's safe, safer, I would say, because you don't have to just touch one. You'd have to literally grab both of them to get shocked. And disclaimer, I'm not an electrician or an electrical engineer. I'm a mechanical engineer. So I kind of learned a lot of this stuff on YouTube myself, watching people like DIY uh, Solar with Will Prouse and other channels, um, uh, David Paz and some of those guys, and then just reading the manual. There's really a lot to be learned. You can download the manual and just go through it, read it in detail, and between that and YouTube videos, you've got it figured out. Another nice thing about this SOK battery is the price. I picked it up for $1,600, and it's the equivalent of four, yeah, four um, lithium-ion batteries, you know, the, the car battery size, and it's much cheaper. And the SOK or the Solark was 3000 So for what you're getting, it's a pretty good deal. And they work together really well. The communication port provides all the information. It's really compatible. It's really a plug and play system. Uh, there wasn't really much set up. I did go through all the parameters in the manual. But some of the limitations I have is this battery is only 100 amps. And this thing can put out more power than 5 kilowatts. So you got 100 amps times 550 volts in a can that's, that changes based on state of charge, but let's just say 50 volts at 100 amp. So the most you can extract or put into this is five kilowatt, yet this'll do 8,000 
and I have 6,400 of solar. So how does that combine and work? Well, if I have enough solar and battery, I can actually do 8,000 watts. But if I have a cloudy day or the clouds suddenly cover the panels and I'm trying to extract more than 5,000 watts, the battery can't handle it and it'll trip the system out and shut down. So what I like to do is charge at just under 5,000 watts. It's actually 18 amps at 240 volts on the vehicle which you have some losses through the inverter and then losses through the battery. So by the time you get to the battery, the battery is almost pumping out its rated 100 amp capacity. So what that allows for is a cloudy day or intermittent clouds come and cover the panels. I can still charge without the system shutting down. The downside is, let's say it's a really sunny, nice day and I am getting 6,000 watts of solar and the battery gets fully charged and I'm only drawing 18 amps to charge the, the car, so I'm four plus kilowatt, but I'm producing six. There's a scenario where the battery fills up and I can't uh, use all that energy. So it just gets left, you know, just lost. And the panels have the potential to put out 6,000 watts or 6,400 watts, but I'm only pulling 5,000, so I'm leaving 1,400 watts on the table. So it's kind of a balancing act, but I can adjust that remotely solar converter it has a nice little app here get the app loaded so I can kind of monitor what's going on here and this is the current power I'm getting 200 watts and we can see a plot of what's going on I can turn everything off except the Sun so this was what today looked like I can look at my um, state of charge on the auxiliary battery which is the SOK here and I've got it set so that at 80% it turns on and starts charging the Tesla. If it drops below 40%, it turns off and then allows it to charge back up again and on and off. And um, that just lets me leave the system mostly autonomous. So I can leave it for the day and it'll just click on and off uh, throughout the day. Not ideal, but at least it, it prevents me from having to come out and check on the car all the time. And then I can go into the equipment here and I can change settings. Um, I can get some additional plots. I can look at the temperature, everything that's going on. Um, I like to go, let's see, where is it? Not there, go back here, setting parameters. This is nice. Because I remember I mentioned that I have a uh, voltage that it turns on and turns off or a state of charge. I can change that here if I need to. So you know, these are factory settings, 100 amps max. Um, battery shutdown. So the system will shut down at 40% charge and it'll restart at 80. Um, what else? Restarts at 80. Oh. The downside is with the Solark, it can't connect directly to the phone. So it has to have a Wi-Fi connection. It uploads all this data to the server, and then I can pull it down on my phone. So what I do at a lot of sites is I tether off my phone with Wi-Fi, and then I use my phone data to connect to the app and pull the information down. The problem with that is it doesn't backlog and store a lot of that old data. So if I'm not connected, I lose a lot of that information. I'll give you an example here. I go back to the equipment and let's say I go back a few days. Let's find a bad day. Maybe one where it didn't capture much. Yeah, so here's a day when it um, it was only briefly on and it's just got, you know, a few a few data points that it just kind of interpolated between. So there's really it's just junk data. I can't get much of it out of it. Um, if I go back to the equipment here. I can look at my total energy. I think this would be accurate if it stayed connected to Wi-Fi. I think this is realistically how much um, energy I've gotten on this solar cannonball run. So 634.5 kilowatt hours. That's the total energy I've collected and that's gotten me to Moriarty, New Mexico. So um, I guess you could run some numbers and figure my total watt hour per mile, which I think is under 300. Um, it's over 200. I'm not exactly sure what it is. And there's a losses. You know, this is what it collected, but not necessarily how much how much the Tesla battery has charged off of it. Okay, so what's really nice about this location 
is the pilot's lounge here where they're letting me charge out at the airport has Wi-Fi. So I've got this connected to Wi-Fi and I'm actually about three miles from here. And so I'm able to remotely monitor the entire electrical system and the Tesla through the Tesla app and adjust any parameters or charging rate on the fly. Anyhow, that is kind of an overview of the specs. I'll put a link in for the Solark, the SOK, and the solar panels. I bought both of these from Current Connected. They have excellent uh, technical support. If you call Solark, you're going to be on hold, and then they'll call you back maybe in a few days. If you call Current Connected, either someone will pick up or they'll call you back much quicker. So I really like the customer support of Solark. And SunPower, I could sell these. I bought them direct from uh, SunPower, but the price right now on Amazon is so low, I don't even think I could import them and compete with that price. So I would just buy them from Amazon. Oh, I forgot to talk about this and my stands. We talked about these before, but these are Easton. Yeah, Easton 7075, and they're 0.34 inches in diameter, and they're made of 7075 T9 aluminum, which has a yield strength of almost that of mild steel, you know, almost double mild steel. So if you take 1018, your regular old construction mild steel, yields around, say, 50-ish kPa, uh, these will yield at almost 100 kPa, so twice the yield strength of steel, and it's a third the weight. So you have a third the weight, twice the strength. That's six times the strength to weight ratio. So they're very light. They only weigh 100 grams or about 0.22 pounds. And they're hard anodized black so that they're scratch resistant and corrosion resistant. Of course, it's not all anodized, so you will get some kind of oxidation kind of that white chalky look on the aluminum if they're left outside for too long. And they have high grade shock cord inside, which is replaceable. You can pull the tips off and replace it if it gets stretched out. That's how I keep all the panels up. And then this trap door is where I store them all. Just like that, times 64. And that's the specifications for my solar cannonball run rig. I really have to mention the uh, build quality here. This terminal, the way they machined it, you scratch with your fingernail, you can feel really nice turn lines. I mean, it's got a really good surface finish. Same thing on this, you can see the nice turn lines. See the milling operation, it's pretty clean. They even CNC machined a chamfer around every single edge of that. Really top-notch quality. I mean, for a budget battery, this terminal is excellent. I really hope the machine shop that makes these keeps doing a good job like this and they keep them, because that's really good.